How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Jimmy Parkus, the Texas Classic. I'm going to the Backdoor Comedy Club in Fort Worth, um, not next Thursday, but the week after that. Um, what I'm about to do now is some skits and feeds that I've wrote it wrote into to try to create what I'm going to say when I go on stage. Um, a couple of my friends thought that this would be a good idea to put it on YouTube and uh, see how it goes. Uh, if anybody has any comments of, of what I can do to make my skit better, um, please feel free to do so. Um, so here it is. So I walk out on stage. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I put my contacts in, and uh, it took me fucking 30 minutes to put them in, so, you know, I just thought I'd throw that in there. I've been sweating the whole time, poking my fucking eye, uh, so, it's for the first time wearing contacts, but anyways, you know, yeah. so, I go out on stage, and the first thing that I'm going to talk about is older women, because I am married to an older woman that is 43, and I'm 28, just turned 28. And um, the biggest thing that I'm going to talk about when I go on stage is that, you know, older women, I love older women, okay? Well, no, let me back that up. I love my older woman, okay? I love my older woman. But I'm going to tell you something about older women. It's awesome to have a cougar because, you know, I am the Brutus. I am the Mufasa of Lion King. So it's all right to have a cougar, but you know, the thing is, is when you, when you hit menopause and you watch a woman go through menopause, oh my God. I mean, that is the worst thing that you could watch. You know, one minute they're happy, one minute they're sad, one minute they're hot, then they're cold and you get all the shit. You go through it so much that you go through what I believe and what I have created is menopause. Okay, just like on Sundays, I love to watch my football games. So, she'll go, hey babe, I'm going to go to the store and, and grab some cabbage or whatever. And um, she'll be fine. She'll leave. 45 minutes later, she'll come back. She'll sound like the fucking rock just walked into the house. I'm sitting on the couch. I look out of the corner of my eye, you hear standing. Just like him, looking around, just looking for shit. Finally, the rock has come back home. Jimmy, I've been gone for 45 minutes. I come back, I look at the sink, the dishes are still full. I mean, you know, of course, I'm, I'm looking at her going, wow. I look at her and, oh, babe, you know, I mean... It's not, you know how I feel. I mean, it's not my job to, to do the dishes. I mean, you know, she looks at me. Come again? Well, babe, uh, you know, I think, it's, it does not matter what you think. Then my whole day's ruined because I've just been put in my place. But see, I've got this thing. I don't know how many of y'all have brothers and sisters, but my older brother was like my savior, you know, he was always there, like, you just didn't mess with him, he was a little guy, but dynamite comes in small packages, now my second oldest brother, Jesse, he's a big dude, okay, but he's, he's, he's a bear at heart, you know, he, he can mess some stuff up if he wanted, but if I try to act out uh, my brother to my, to my wife when she's acting like this, you know, I go up to her, I'm like, what are you talking to me like that for? I'm punching the face. You know, I can't I can't do that because it's not too intimidating. But see, my brother doesn't put up with that. And the way that he does it is exactly how I'm fixing to act it. He'll say, This shit stops right now. On Sunday football games, do not come in this house and talk to me like that. Do you understand? I'm the captain. I don't care how tall you are or what you do. I am the captain. And it works every time. Works every time. I don't know what my brother TJ does, but it works every time. Um, another thing that I want to talk about is these kids. You know, they, they, 
Oh my God, they're so they're bad. You know, you go into a grocery store and see things that that if I would have done when I was a kid, oh my God. You know, my mom used to whip my ass with a wooden spoon, okay? So whether she was making ramen noodles or whether she was making, I don't know, toast, she had a wooden spoon next to her, and if I messed up, I got whipped with it. And it was always the one that had the little hole right in the middle of it. I don't know why they made those. They made them perfectly for me. Okay? So, when I get whipped, I always knew when it was fixing to stop because my mom would sit there and she grabbed me by the hand. I mean, don't run from me. Do not run from me. She grabbed me by the hand and she'd go... Durr! And while she was doing that that fast, I'm running around in circles screaming like a chicken. And she's going, I told you and come on mom hurry up yeah you know because every time she's she'd get done with the sentence she'd stop you know but uh you know and, and then another topic that i want to talk about is movies you know freddy krueger used to be scary he used to when you saw him come on you were like oh man you know freddy krueger i'm gonna laugh at him and everything and and, and be scared but but see the last Freddy Krueger was just horrible. Okay, and now let's get to Batman. As uh, Bane would say, Batman, I'm a part of the League of Shadows. Batman, I, I don't know whether he's taking a shit in three years or not, but that's horrible. I mean, you try and go walk into a grocery store and talk like Batman. You walk in, and you you have to you have to do the curvature when he talks. You have to to let your lips just like Christian look just like Christian Bale's. You have to do it right. I've tried it. You walk into a store and pray to God that you're not in some Hickville part of Texas because this is what's going to happen to you if you do. Excuse me. Do you know how I get to Dallas? The clerk. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I think he, I think he go down, uh, somewhere off 35, and, uh, that's where all the police go for a midnight donut. Christian Bale. Do I look like a cop? Well, no, sir. Uh, to be quite honest with you, I got one eye on you and one eye on the, on the car out there, you know. <laughs> but, but what I'm trying to say is, is, is movies today, they don't, you know, it's like gone overboard. Um, you know, I don't know. I just remember Jim Carrey. I, I remember all these good actors and actresses. You know, uh, Jack Nicholson in, in Batman was so intimidating. You know, uh, wait till they get a load of me. Batman was was what five foot two inches tall. Um, I want to tell y'all something. Um, kind of getting a little stage fright here, but I just don't give it. I don't give a damn because you know. I, hey, um, back when I cleaned carpet. Okay, now this is a true story. This isn't a skit. This is a true story that I am gonna tell. Um, I went into this house. It was like a four hundred thousand dollar house. And this lady was probably 65 years old. And when I walked into the house, when I was going to clean her carpet, I noticed that the house looked a little creepy. So I walk in and I bring my stuff in and I'm starting to treat her carpet. I oversold like three, four hundred dollars on her, which, you know, hey, she paid with cash. So I didn't put it on the receipt. So I'm cleaning her carpet. And she proceed, I proceed, oh God, I ask her the worst question I can ever ask her. What do you do for a living? Because this is a beautiful house. I mean, God, I just pocketed $400. I mean, what do you do? She proceeds to tell me, well, you see, me and my husband, we've, we've owned a funeral home for about uh, 25 years now. My husband is the owner. I am the embalmer. And, um... 
That's, that's what we've been doing. We love our jobs. Wow, cool. You know, hey, somebody's got to do it, you know. <laughs> somebody's got to do it. Did you say you wanted me to clean underneath this couch here? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so she asked me while I'm sweating and cleaning. She says, well, James, do you like what you do? Yeah, I love what I do. I'm cleaning your fucking carpet. I love what I do. So we end up getting into some conversation, and I don't know where this came from. Uh, to be really honest, I don't know if you ever listened to someone before, and, and you're listening to them, but you're kind of like thinking, okay, what am I going to eat? Am I going to go to Jack in the Box? Or am I going to go to McDonald's? That's what was happening to me until... So, she starts telling me, she says, well, um, it, it, it gets kind of hard sometimes. And I say, yeah, you know, I, I bet it has to be really hard when you have a child. You know, I have a four-year-old daughter myself, and, and that's got to be just horrible to see children or young people come through. And she tells me, she says, yes, it is. It's very, it's very hard. You, it's very hard. Um, as a matter of fact, about a year ago, um, during the holidays, um, we had a child that came through that was about a year old, and um, I think it was born premature, and the baby had died, and I had embalmed it, and it was during the holidays, and we didn't have anybody in the funeral home. It, we, that was the only person that we had there. And the funeral wasn't for a couple of days. It was right during Thanksgiving. So what I did was uh, I, I wrapped the baby up in a blanket. And I put it in my car and I brought it home. And I just felt so bad leaving it there all alone. And I placed it in the spare bedroom because I just, I could not lock, I told my husband, I can't lock the door and just leave the child there. It, I just can't do it. It's not in my heart. Wow. She says to me, you think I'm crazy, don't you? No, not at all. Did you say you put the baby in here? Okay. Well, look, you know, um, I thought I had a whole gallon of brightener of what I oversold on. So what I'm going to do is, is I'll just, I'll come back. Yeah, I'll come back. And, uh, oh my God, I was completely freaked out like my hose that goes into my wand that sucks up all the water you could hear it it goes <sharp inhale> I'm holding it in my hand just looking at her like this woman has lost her mind man so you could hear the <sharp inhale> but it wasn't of the hose it was my asshole puckering up thinking, oh my God, how am I going to get out of here? So, like a decimal point. So I go out.